During this section, we're going to take a look at annotating a profile. We have a profile that we designed and stored it in coordinate geometry, and now we want to annotate it or label it. In our training guide, we'll start on page 1 5, and that'll carry us through to the bottom of page 1 9. So we want to go back into our Power Civil uh, CAD file called Layout DGN. I'm going to open up another view and I'm going to zoom out and over to where I have a profile. So there's a profile over here. And what I want to do is I want to open up a tool in Civil under Geometry called Active Chain Control. What this allows me to do, this tool, is it allows me to sync up two views, one for plan and one for profile, and eventually one for cross-section. So I'm going to select my job, I'm going to select my chain, and I'll notice that there's a profile cell status icon that now is green that used to be gray. That means we see the cell. So I'm going to right click on button 2 over to the right hand side of the tool frame, right click on 2 and set it to profile. That'll fit that to view and it'll tell me that window 2 is for the profile of chains DECAB, the cab. So now when I'm in plan or profile I can see where I am in plan. I'm also going to now label the profile. So I'm going to go to Civil, Profiles, and Draw Profile Tabular Data. The Tabular Data tool uses a settings file to grab in certain information and label it. As you can see here, at this point, we're looking at a settings file that's blank default unnamed.cch. I've created a settings file that we can use. We're going to open that up and it's in our site data geo site standards folder called profile tab data.cch. Click OK and that brings up the settings file. Now what it's doing is it'll load up all the information that was stored in that settings file and it'll actually draw on draw the draw information on the profile. Now what's happened is it's gone in there and it's drawn in our case three sets of data, design surface information, existing surface information, and station. And it's placed that in what we call a frame annotation. So it's placed it in a grid at the bottom. It, how did it draw that automatically? Well, it saw the purple graphics and the dashed elements out there. And in that settings file was all the pertinent information about that. So under design elements, is where that information is set up. So I can see that, for example, the design surface is a profile, and the profile is DECABDES, which is our profile in Kogo. So it's a Kogo profile called Profile DEC DECAB De Design. So once I, if it wasn't pointing to that profile, I would simply select it here and modify. And so that sets that surface. And so what and the existing surface is a line on EX Pro CL, and that's the surface that that dash lines on. And then <clears throat> back over here, under the design surface, it's going along a sur design surface and grabbing the elevation of the design. Design being, like I said here, the design, that profile and it's grabbing along at every station along the chain, so every 50 feet, it's grabbing the profile elevation.
It's also doing it at high and low points and also at tangent points. So what I'm left with is it's gone and at every 50 feet it's extracted the elevation of the design surface and it's labeled it here along the bottom. It's also done the same with existing surface. So it's gone along the, and gotten the existing surface too. And also it's gone out there and grabbed the station every 50 feet in the high and low points. And it's placed that at the bottom. Now I don't have to have those turned on. I can turn them all off and it won't draw them. Now what we're going to do is come over here and set up these two items. Now I already have them in there and I'm going to take them out, but we're going to come out and figure out how, how do we set up these items. Now the settings file, I'm going to go ahead and open it. I mean, open the preferences. So go to File Preferences, and like I said, here's the t all the information they design the existing end station already set up. And I'm going to go over here and we'll remove these real quick, and we're going to set up something to kind of figure out how you can set up the tabular data dialog to draw to label things that you want. So we're going to do what we call on-surface annotation. So that would be labeling something along an element. And in my case, I have an existing ground element and a proposed element. So what I want to do is label the slopes. So what we'll do is we'll create a title or something of something we want to label, in this case, positive grade labels. And we want to label a profile component. And that profile component will be slope. So you know, there's other items here, but we're going to label slope along design. So that's being read from my, that's being read from over here in design elements. It sees that profile design and it po populates it here. What do we where do we want to label the profile? Well, we want to label it within the tangent lines as they go up. So any line in the profile tangent that's going up, we want to grab its slope. Then we want to place a label and we want to place that label along the profile and we want to set up double click on the sample text and we can set up the sample text to a certain height and width and font we can also adjust it so if, it, you know, if we want to adjust it down the line or up the line we can do that or go all up or above or below the line stuff like that and then we want to set up the format now the key to this dialog is when you key something in, for example, I want to label the slope and it's going to be, you know, I don't care, the width can be whatever the width is, the justification, the decimal place accuracy, and then I want space and then the percent sign. In order for the dialog to accept what I just typed, I have to hit enter, enter or tab, otherwise it won't change. You kind of have to get used to that. It takes a little bit of a time. But anytime you key something in, you have to hit enter or tab. On the prefix, I'm going to put a plus sign. And of course, enter or tab. And then the slope will be a percent calculated, will be percent slope. So now that I've filled all that out, I add it to the list at the top. And that'll be the first thing that I label. Now I'll make sure my scale is one, one, one per inch. And I'll change it, make the same change over here. And you can see once I've added it, it actually draws it because it's automatically taken whatever's in my settings file and put it over on the here under row definition. 
I want to do the same thing for the negative grade labels. Negative grade labels, enter, because I typed. But this time, the location is going to be down. And the format is not going to have a plus in front of it, so I'm going to take the plus out and enter, because I typed in there. And I'm going to add that. And so it's automatically created it, and it's added the negative grade labels as well. So you can see in the tabular data, as I add rows in my settings file, they get added over here. So really the only thing that's going to change from project to project as far as what you label is going to be the design elements, a different profile name, maybe the existing surface is drawn in a different color. So we simply you know, choose the color that it was drawn in, or choose the name of the profile, modify, or add it to the list of design elements, and then the, everything else picks that information up and labels it, labels the pertinent information about that surface. So I'm going to exit the profile tool. Now if I want it permanently in the file, notice I exit, it goes away. So in the draw profile tabular data tool, you actually have to hit the draw button to permanently add it to the file. So you can actually use this tool not just for drawing, but for you know just getting information that might you might want to see. And of course, if you want to draw it permanently, you hit draw. And then when you close it, the graphics stay behind.